Hello, and welcome to the third instance of mixing pop vocals using Waves plugins. In the first two videos, we have actually analyzed how I approach mixing vocals directly using processors such as EQ to control the timbre, uh, machine learning um, devices such as Silk to retain uh, as much as goodies as possible and removing unwanted resonances, as well as using compression and parallel processing. Now to recap exactly at which point we stopped on our previous videos, I'm gonna give you just a sneak peek of what we have achieved so far. In order to do so, I have to compensate a bit more as we saw for the level, just because on our next section, we're gonna analyzing how all the backgrounds and harmonies are gonna be working with the vocal. All right, so here we have our vocals minus the effects. Actually, you can simply mute the effects over here. And there you have it. Okay, so you get a glimpse and an idea of how the vocal sounds right now. Now, of course, we need to create a bit more space, three-dimensionality, width. And how do we do this with effects? Now, for me, let me just snap out a preview for a minute and get off latch. For me, one of the most important thing when it comes to effects, and they vary in every single mix. They're never always the same aside for some specific ones like plate reverbs, which I constantly used. Um, in this case, every time I work with effects, the idea is to kind of like capture the listener within an oral experience. What do I mean by that? I wouldn't use every single effect constantly. Effects comes and go. They create interest. They serve as a primus mean of creating depth and creating a bit more interest around our instrument. But if used as a creative tool, as a dynamic tool, we can actually bring in and out specific sections so that the performance becomes a bit more uh, dynamic. To give an example, uh, let's go on one of these effects. So if you actually click with Control Command on a parameter, you can actually display into the view mode inside Pro Tools exactly that parameter. This was just to show you that what I clicked on is the fader. And in this case, as you can actually see here, we have different rides. So this very long delay, which we're gonna talk at later on within this video, actually comes in and out on specific phrases. And as you can see, it's automated because otherwise it could create a bit more chaos and it would be too redundant. All right, let's start analyzing our first insert. Our first insert within our effects, it's a plate reverb. Now, as you can see here, I have already set up my return chain where I have a series of delays, reverbs, that works in different manners. Now, the first effects we're going to analyze is my plate reverb. So without any further ado, I'm actually going to unmute it. And what do I have on my plate? My plate has two effects on it, or the returns of my reverb. Well, the first plugin I use is an EQ. This is an REQ. It is a great linear EQ, and I generally use it only to control the amount of signal that feeds my plate. Plate reverbs are known to be kind of like very bright and they're very good on vocals, but this brightness sometimes can hyper accentuate things you don't want, such as S's, all these weird letters that you don't want to feed within the reverb. At the same time, although reverbs in nature are generally very dark, we want to kind of like scoop this reverb only around the meat of the vocals, which are mid frequencies. Hence, I've used uh, 
high pass filter at 392 hertz and a low pass filter at 2,997, almost 3,000, 3K. Now the vocals feeds the EQ and then gets into my plate. Now this plate is great. I'm using an R verb, possibly one of the best plates out there. Now the great thing about this plugin is that you have full control over a bunch of parameters. Early reflections, actually I'm gonna lower them just a tiny bit. The reverb tail, um, you can actually EQ and decide how resonant this plate might be. Applying an extra layer of EQ to the voice. In this case, uh, what I'm doing here is using a fairly long pre-delay, uh, 39 milliseconds, so that what I could do is distantiate the amount of time that it takes from the dry signal to actually reach the reverb. But enough of me talking, let's actually hear how the vocal sounds with and without reverb. All right, I'm gonna go first without and then with. I haven't raised her voice, but listen with this plate. All of a sudden, even though it's very subtle, we start creating a bit more space within the stereo feel, right? So we have our sound stage, and all of a sudden we are pushing these vocals a bit more forward. Now bear in mind that when we use reverb, Reverb is one of those effects that has a counter effect, which means it actually serves to blend in with the tracks more the instrument, but overusing reverbs tends to make things very smeared, very back in the mix and very confusing. I'm gonna let you hear the vocals with only the reverb, so I'm gonna mute the instrumental. Let's go ahead and magically mute our instrumental. Always knew I can be the one, so ready to show what I become. Can't help but feel alive in a place where only the strong survive. That's life. That's life in the city. You hear how this rear actually hyper accentuate the main frequency of the vocals in a very nice way. So we're not placing actually our singer in a confined space. We're using the reverb as a kind of like shades of color to hyper extend the decay of our words in a very nice way. What I'm gonna be doing now is actually showing you the reverb with and without the EQ. So this is with EQ, pre-reverb. Always knew I can be the one So ready to show what I become My life Without. Always knew I can be the one so ready to show what I become my life. All of a sudden, my life left the F. Every single S is. There is a very low rumble here. Just give it a listen one more time. Always knew I can be the one. So ready to show what I become. Always knew I can be the one. So ready to show what I become. Now all of a sudden, the vocal starts to get way more controlled. What I'm gonna do right now is also letting you hear the difference with the reverb with pre-delay and without pre-delay. So let's go on a pre-delay of zero. Always knew I can be the one So ready to show what I become My life 39 milliseconds. Always knew I can be the one so ready to show what I become, my life. Pretty lay of zero. Always knew I can be the one. So ready to show what I become. 39 milliseconds. Always knew I can be the one. So ready to show what I become, my life. So you hear with pretty lay, actually, the vocals tends to arrive slightly earlier, making sure that they will still retain a lot of distinction that they won't be cluttered with the reverb 
And yet after you hear this very nice tail that kind of like accompanies the sustain of the vocals. A second reverb that I generally use, specifically for electronic music, like in this case, is the H reverb. Now, H reverb has a very interesting feature. It allows you to actually customize, especially this specific instance of H reverb, everything. You have a lot of control by selecting how the reverb is actually reacting on specific rooms and specific environments, as well as building a custom synchronization between the reverb tail and the, the, the rhythmic of the songs. Now, in this case, I wanted an extremely long reverb. I'm gonna just mute the other two plugins that are on this returns, just to let you hear how this vocal sounds with H reverb only. In context. Impossible to use. Hence, this effect is only used for, how can I say, uh, more of a ear candy type of style. As a matter of fact, within this effect, I'm using two other incredible plugins, which are the C1 compressor by Waves. Again, it's a linear compressor, but allows you to really get into the details of how this compressor reacts to specific signals. Now, in this case, as you can see here, the compressor has a side chain, which if we go back into our mix window, all of a sudden, you're gonna see that down here, there is a little fader called side chain in pre-fader, of course. Now, with the side chain on, I'm actually having the vocals triggering the compressor so that the extremely long reverb that we heard before will only come up when the singer will stop singing. Let's put them side by side. So this is without the compressor being side-chained by the vocals. Always knew I can be the one So ready to show what i become This is with the compressor on. Always knew I can be the one So ready to show what i become My life, my life, yeah Can't So you hear the compressor is kind of like releasing this extremely long tail only after she is done singing. Now after this, I'm using, for the same principle explained previously, another REQ to kind of like again focusing a bit more on the same thing we have discussed before, which are the mid frequencies. So now these three together are gonna create this sort of effect. Always knew I can be the one, so ready to show what I become. My life, my life, yeah. Especially if we actually gonna go on a different section. Let me go ahead and get on the chorus. In the city. You hear how all of a sudden the end of In the City uh, kind of like explodes and just pushes these vocals away from us. Listen how different that would be without the compressor taming down these vocals. It would sound a little bit too much as if she's singing inside a Grand Canyon, which is not ideal. So with a bit more control over the tail. With both plate and H reverb. Without. In the city. La. See how all of a sudden we go from being here in the space to all of a sudden literally in front of our face, which is not ideal. 
Now I'm gonna let you hear the same thing in context with the song without and with only reverbs and parallel uh, compression. Let's start a bit before. Pre-chorus. You hear that in context, they don't sound as big, but yet when they're off, all of a sudden the vocal sounds almost naked, almost too bare bones. With these effects, we're kind of like taking our vocals and spread it across our soundstage in a very nice way. But this is not all. In order for me to kind of like create a bit more interest within the stereo field, I use three different types of delay. The first delay I'm using is our infamous H delay. And as for my reverb, although you can actually customize the feedback and the type of filter within the delay, and I have a filter at 108 hertz and a low pass filter at 1K, sort of-ish, I have modified the rate, and this is a um, ping pong delay synchronized with the tempo. I always use an EQ. In this case, I'm using a stock EQ from Pro Tools just to roll off even more of the upper end of the frequency spectrum. So this is the vocals only with the reverbs and then I will add the H delay. Always knew I can be the one So ready to show what i become My life, my life, yeah can't help but feel alive. You hear that right now, we have a bit more kind of like juggling back and forth between the left and the right. I'm actually gonna give you a sneak peek of the H delay without the two reverbs before. Always knew I can be the one, so ready to show what I become. Here there is a lot of movement. It's not in the way, it's very far back, but all of a sudden, instead of having the reverb, which help us to gain a bit more uh, depth, with the lay, we're kind of like carving a bit more width. So we have a bit more movement that just catches the listener when they least expect it. This is exactly what we want. On top of this, I use another delay for more coloration, which is a super tap. Now the super tap by Waves, it's a great, great, great plugin because allow us to really emerge ourselves within customization and creativity. As a matter of fact, we could actually customize this plugin and allowing us to create all sorts of combinations within the stereo field. Now, in many cases, I would actually remove the center from the equation and I could modify a bit the position of my left and right to create even more um, dynamics within the delay. In this case, I will remove the center, but I want to let you hear how the super tap actually acts on the vocals itself. Always knew I can be the one so ready to show what i become my life my life yeah with the center always knew i can be the one so ready to show what i become my life my life now you hear that all of a sudden the image is kind of like very short slappish delay but with the center we can actually decide the amount of information that is not only retained between the left and the right, but even on the center. 
Now, the great thing about this is that we can actually vary with our gain the percentage of the amount of gain that resides within the center. Always knew I can be the one So ready to show what I've become My life, my life, yeah Can't help but feel alive in a Now, I still think that with the center, although in nine times out of 10 cases, I would remove it, for this specific song, I think it worked really, really well because it allowed me to get a bit more center information uh, from my return. Last but not least, of course, I use a long delay. Now this delay, it's only used for automation purposes. What do I mean by that? If you remember, I showed you before, but I'm gonna do it again. To display again volume automation, you only click on the minus toggle in Pro Tools. But instead of going onto your view menu and decide what you want to view, a quick access to this parameter in this case is holding down control command and click on the parameter you want to view, which could be the mute, which have none, or in this case, my fader. So in this case, for my long delay, I am actually using a Many Moroccan plugin. Now, this is one of the coolest plugin you could use, there are a bunch of plugins that Man in Moroccan did. But in this case, this delay allows you to have a very interesting supplement of, I can add a bit more reverb to the delay. So having the delay feeding the reverb, but at the same time sending a bit more distortion to the tail of the delay. And in this case, I've also used a doubler. I haven't detuned it that much, but the left and the right signals are slightly different. So we're using a quarter note on the left and an eighth note dotted on the, on the right. Uh, I've removed a little bit of the highs um, and I'm gonna be using this only to extend specific words. The feedback is both uh, 58 on the left and 47 milliseconds on the right. And if you wanna hear how that sounds, let's get over here and I'm gonna go onto the sections here. So you're gonna see this fader actually being automated and moving. And the reason why we're using this type of delay, it's more for coloration. It's more for making things a bit more interesting. Always knew I can be the one. So ready to show what I become. My life, my life, yeah. Can't help but feel alive in a place where only the strong survive. That's life, that's life in the city. You know, since it's a very long delay, if I would have left this delay up all the time, it would be just a mess. Always knew I can be the one, so ready to show what I become. My life, my life. Hence, instead of actually using a delay in such a boring way, what we tend to do is automate it in specific parts. So it doesn't play all the time. So you can kind of capture the attention of the listener and not making things sounding exactly the same. Now, what I'm gonna be doing right now is actually showing you the vocals with and without my effects. So let's get here. I've actually prepared my VCA, which has all my effects. So this is my vocals only with direct processing. And then what I'm gonna be doing throughout the performance is remove on or unmute actually my VCA and let you hear the vocals with parallel processing and effects. Always knew I can be the one. So ready to show what I become. feel alive in a place where only the strong survive that's life that's life in the city in the city la, la, in the city in the city la. Here, the moment I remove all these effects, the vocals just become small, boring, tight, 
lifeless. So we're gonna start without and then with the effect. Now listen how much the vocals are actually gonna change the overall mean of the song once all these effects are added together. So in this case, all these effects that I have over here, including the two parallel processing being uh, gain parallel processing, the shine and the parallel vocals, and all my reverbs and delay effects are muted and controlled by this BCA. I'm gonna let you hear without and throughout the song, I will unmute it to let you hear the size that the vocals acquire with that. So it's night and day. The performance was great, but right now we are in a period where simply great performances won't cut the record. The productions have become way too big of an animal. And we need to be able to allow singers to kind of like compete against the size of the production. Now, two more things are focused on how do we mix along with the lead vocals, which has already acquired a specific weight within it, background vocals. And this is what we're gonna actually take a look in our next video. Ciao.